Now that your treatment's complete, it's time to move on to the outline of your story. But before we can do that, we need to understand what story is. And so the first question is, what function does story serve? Basically, it's a series of obstacles your hero must overcome to achieve his or her physical goal. It's also a series of events that reveals your character's spines or behavior. And finally, it's a roller coaster ride experience from your hero's point of view. The basic questions to the story follows as, who is your hero? What does your hero want? Why does your hero want it? What obstacles stand in your hero's way? What's the jeopardy? What's the meaningful conclusion? And what is the theme? Now the first three questions basically sets up the story. These are very important. This is laying the pipes that will get your story started, but we also want to do this as quickly and concisely and as efficiently as possible. Who is your hero? It's the vehicle who the audience takes the journey with. Your audience wants the hero to succeed. You need an active hero who solves his or her own problems. You need a hero who's imperfect with flaws. Superman, from a narrative point of view, is a really terrible hero. He doesn't have that many flaws, and the whole kryptonite thing is bullshit, right? He was born on a planet made of kryptonite, so if it was really poisonous, they would all be dead there. Indiana Jones is another example of imperfections, even though it's in sort of a very basic, you know, fear of snakes, ooh, Indy kind of way. It's much better to create flaws that bas basically go into uh, the problems of characters, you know, the... Uh, Fear of rejection, fear of uh, death, protective instincts taken so far that they become counterproductive. It's important that you introduce your hero as soon as possible. I would say on the first page, on the first sentence of your first scene. However, if you want to open up with a little mood, that's fine. But we want to get to that hero as soon as possible. What does your hero want? This needs to be a physical goal. Your hero can't want to be happy. That's not a physical goal. If getting a bicycle, like in Pee Wee's uh, Big Adventure, getting your bicycle back is your physical goal, and that will then create his happiness as a result. The emotional goal is important because it explains to the audience why you're putting your hero through so much shit to get to that physical goal. It's very important to establish the jeopardy in your story as soon as possible. And basically, Jeopardy is what bad thing will happen if your hero fails. In Happy Gilmore, if Happy doesn't win the golf tournament, his grandma's going to lose her house. It Basically, it gives the audience something to root for. It creates empathy with the hero. Also try to create a ticking clock, right? In Happy Gilmore, it comes down to that one golf game. And so he's got 18 holes to win. So we, we can see where the end is coming. That's very important. It's also very important to avoid false jeopardy, like a story about a fake kidnapping. Or you create a great deal of jeopardy and then reveal that it was all just a dream, so we don't need to resolve it. The first three questions set up your story. But your story doesn't begin until your hero reaches her first obstacle. What kind of obstacles stand in the way? Most of them are physical. If it's a prison movie, they want to escape. It can include psychological things that uh, prevent your hero from achieving the goal. It's important to create rising jeopardy. You want each obstacle to get progressively bigger and more important, right? If your very first obstacle is getting to in a fist fight with a shark in the water, you can't go downhill from there. Now the most important obstacle is the OSM, what I call the old shit moment. And basically, this is the final obstacle in your story. And when you create a good oh shit moment, basically, when this obstacle is presented to your hero, your audience will say to themselves, oh shit, now what is the hero going to do? And this is a really important moment because if your audience says that, this is where you own the audience. This is where your powers of manipulation are being demonstrated. And then when your hero can circumvent this problem that not even your audience can figure out how to solve. It shows how smart you are, how clever your hero is, and how worthy they will be to achieve the final goal. So then when we get to that final goal, we need to kind of understand what a meaningful conclusion is. In a happy ending, your hero will achieve the physical goal and the emotional goal. If you have a character ending, your hero will fail the physical goal, and your hero will achieve the emotional goal. Rocky and the Bad News Bears are good examples of heroes who fail the physical goal. They make it to the final championship. They lose the final championship. 
but they gain the emotional goal, which is basically the respect of their peers. In a bittersweet ending, your hero will achieve the physical goal, but fail the emotional goal. For example, your hero discovers the cure for cancer, but too late to save his child. In the end, he makes the world a better place, but still at a grave personal cost. And then lastly, what is the theme of the story? What's the takeaway message? It needs to resonate in every scene and every episode. You don't necessarily have to know it going into the first draft. It, you can discover it during the writing process, but eventually there will be a point where you realize what the theme is, and then you will go back and rewrite the whole project, making sure that every scene touches on theme. Before we go into your outline, you need to revisit your logline. In a single sentence, state who your hero is, what your hero wants, and what's the jeopardy if your hero fails. Let's take Rocky, for example. Rocky is given the chance to fight for the heavyweight title. If he fails, it will prove that he's a loser. The purpose of an outline is to create the order of events that takes place in your story. It's not about two people talking in a coffee house, but what is being accomplished in that coffee house. Try to write one sentence for each scene to get its true purpose. Now group these scenes into acts and end each act with a complication, whether it's a problem for your hero, putting your hero in physical jeopardy, or creating a question in your hero's mind that needs to be answered. When you're dealing with a one-hour structure, it basically breaks into an opening act of one to three pages. Act one, which is 15 pages, it can also run a little longer to like 18. Act two is basically 15 pages, act three is 15 pages, act four is a little shorter at 10 to 12, and then the close is another one to three pages. In the open, you need to introduce the hero and at the very least reveal the character's spine or unique point of view that makes us understand what makes this hero tick. You can also establish what your hero wants for the A-plot of that episode. In Act 1, you'll introduce the A-plot, introduce the B-plot, introduce the C-plot. Remember, what the hero wants. Now, you have multiple characters in your stories, so maybe the B and C plot are physical goals for other characters in the story. Or maybe the A-plot is a murder investigation and the B-plot is your hero trying to keep her marriage working because she's gone 23 hours a day. You want to end Act 1 on the A-plot complication because it is the most important subplot in your story. The question you should always ask going from scene to scene, especially as you get into Act 2, is where are we and where are we going? Then in Act 2 you can track your A-plot complications, your B-plot complications, and your C-plot complications, and end on the complication of any one of those three stories. In Act 3, the overall theme is to create rising jeopardy as you track your A, your B, and your C-plot. And you want to end this on your A-plot oh shit moment. The theme of Act 4 is resolution, where you want to resolve your A-plot, resolve your B-plot, and resolve your C-plot. Then when you get into your short close, your characters can celebrate their success. In the half hour world, there's basically two structures, the two act structure and the three act structure. In the two act structure, each act is approximately 15 pages. In act one, you'll introduce your hero, you'll establish the A plot goal and the B plot goal, and you'll end on a complication. A typical example of a uh, A plot complication is that your hero has a goal puts together a plan to achieve that goal, um, but your hero fails, and unexpected problems are created by this plan. Then when we get into Act 2, your hero basically needs to pivot from this A-plot complication, and in trying to resolve that problem, it creates your oh shit moment. You also need to create your B-plot oh shit moment in Act 2, and resolve both A and B plot lines, and celebrate the story success. In the three-act half-hour structure, Act 1 can run a little long, 10 to 12 pages. Act 2 is about 10 pages. And Act 3 should be a little shorter because you're buttoning everything up. In Act 1, you want to introduce your heroes, establish your A plot, establish your B plot, and end on a complication. In Act 2, you want to continue the complications and end that act on a A plot OSM and a B plot oh shit moment. And then in Act 3, you need to resolve your A and B plot lines and celebrate the story. So try to keep this all in mind as you create your first outline. You will need to read this aloud to the group. And once again, if you can't maintain our interest just by telling us a simple outline, we're, you're really going to have a hard time maintaining our interest in 30 to 60 pages. So think about compelling complications that will draw us into the hero's journey.